So exactly what is a tangent line? In this section, we will define the concept of a secant line, show the relationship between a secant line and a tangent line, relate the tangent line to instantaneous rates of change. The definition of a tangent line is as follows. A tangent line to a curve at a given point is a line that barely touches the curve at that point. Notice our curves down here each have points on them. If we draw in the line through those points, they barely touch the curve at that point and they are each considered to be a tangent line. Think about a tangent line as if it were a pencil balanced on the back of a bug as it walks along a given curve. Let's look at an example of a secant line. The tangent line actually comes from another type of line called the secant line. The secant line is a line that passes through two points on a function. As you can see from this curve, we have a line drawn through the two points. This line is the secant line. As one of those points approaches the other, the secant line converges to the tangent lines. The points move closer and closer together until the second point is on top of the first. That's when the secant line becomes the tangent line. Here is an example of a rate of change. This graph below represents the distance walked after x hours. Now let's consider the slope of a secant line that's drawn through the two points 1, 2, and 3, 8. This slope would represent the average rate of change. In this case, it would be average velocity since the change in y would be miles and the change in x would be hours. If we take those two ordered pairs and plug them into our formula for slope, we're going to get 6 divided by 2 or 3 miles per hour. Now suppose that we wanted to find the instantaneous rate of change. Instead of using the slope of a secant line, we would need to use the slope of a tangent line. At the ordered pair 2, 4 on this graph, the instantaneous rate of change is 2.77 miles per hour. This instantaneous rate of change is actually the instantaneous velocity at this point. Let's take a look at another velocity example. Suppose we're going to take a rock and drop it from the top of the Eiffel Tower, which is 324 meters above the ground. Our goal is to find the velocity of the rock after 4 seconds. The distance that an object has traveled after falling freely for t seconds is known to be s of t equals 4.9 t squared meters. Here we are looking for the velocity at a single point in time, t equals 4. We're going to start by considering the average velocity. The average velocity is found by taking the total distance traveled divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. The average velocity over a short period of time, let's say from t equals 4 seconds to t equals 4.2 seconds, is given by the formula s evaluated at 4.2 minus s evaluated at 4 divided by the 0.2 seconds. So plugging those numbers into the formula is going to give us 86.436 minus 78.4 divided by 0.2. This yields 40.18 meters per second as the average velocity. The following table shows what would happen to the average velocity if we decrease the time interval. Notice that we go through four different time intervals with the final time interval running from t equals 4 to t equals 4 and 1 ten thousandth of a second. In that interval, the average velocity is 39.2005 meters per second. As the interval shortens, the average velocity appears to be converging towards 39.2 meters per second, which is the instantaneous velocity. This example illustrates the difference between average velocity which is the slope of the secant line, and instantaneous velocity, which is the slope of the tangent line.